Step number 19 is one of the last steps in putting a baseline schedule together. Uh, we want to review the schedule log. Now understand that the software knows kind of what to look at and can look at it you know look at the analytics of the schedule and determine some of the issues uh, before we do that let's talk about making sure we have everything in line um, so that we present everything presentable so we want to ensure that we have all the correct columns shown the only columns that I see that are missing that I discussed in a previous slide is the actuals so I'd want to go in and add in um, the actual starts and the actual finish uh, because that's going to be critical when we do the schedule updates. Okay. Um, actual start and then actual finish. And now, and I always talk about resizing the columns, right? We want to make the best use of the space we have because we only have, we only want to do one wide. We want to always, we want to sort by the early start date with the arrow pointing down. So we, it has a cascade effect there. Um, now we have all the columns that need to be shown. Um, we have, the ID, the name, the duration, mandates, remaining duration, early start, early finish, late start, late finish, actual start, actual finish, total float, budgeted total cost, physical percent complete, and earned value cost. These are the columns key to when you do a schedule update. Um, uh, understand that the end user does not have this software, so we're going to have to show everything in the software uh, because the end user is not going to have that. Um, on the Gantt on the Gantt bars, we can go over here and look. You know, by default, usually the you know the regular tasks, non-critical path tasks, are green, and the critical path tasks are red. You notice that I have uh, the line showing. I personally, it's a preference. I like turning off of the lines because once you open up all the WBSs, you're going to see it's difficult and almost impossible to see the lines. So that's just a personal preference of mine. I don't turn them on uh, to turn the schedule to actually uh, when I go to present the schedule. Uh, the color of the bars, the bars are pretty much standard. But, uh, you know, you, we can go and we can look at all the different colors. Uh, green is obviously for normal tasks. That's what we want to show. Red is for critical path. Uh, we, we may want to, uh, you know, go down here and show progress, right? Progress will be in black. Uh, so these are some of the defaults that you probably, you know, can pause this video and make sure that you have. You see the ones that I have in there. The ones I have checked are, are the ones that are displayed. Uh, and those ones are the thin ones I think that are critical. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. Uh, <clears throat> now we we have the color balls are OK. When when uh, projects get done, our tasks get done, they'll turn into blue from green, of course. Um, I talked about making sure that we're sorted by early start, but I can't say that enough. We want to make sure that we have the cascade effect and the arrow pointing down, not up, but down. OK. Um, and we want to make sure we have all the summaries open. You see that from uh, a previously working on this uh, project, we actually have the pre-construction closed. So we want to open that. We want to make sure all the summary tasks are open, you know, not closed so we can see them. Because when you print it out, you won't be able to see them. Now let's talk about, um, real quick, let's talk about the uh, schedule log. If we go here um, to the schedule buttons or or known as F9, if we click there, we can run a schedule log, okay? The schedule log will, you know, it'll tell you where it's going to save it. Let's go ahead and, you know, uh, we want to uh, save the schedule log to maybe to a desktop, okay? And we want to save it to the desktop. Um, and what, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we're going to, we're going to hit schedule. Um, let's see, let's do it to the desktop. So we want to make sure that path name is, you know, is correct, um, and we want to overwrite the existing, and we want to hit schedule. And what that will do is that'll create a scheduling log. And how you can tell where that scheduling log is actually at is you look at the path name here. Uh, I'll go here to my documents schedule log. So I'll go into and I'll look in here and I'll say, all right, where is um, my scheduling log? Okay, it says user Scott Arias dash ace 
slash documents right so I go to my documents folder and I'm gonna look to see see there's my scheduling log right there so I just follow the path name found the schedule log I'll open it up this is a notebook um, and you probably couldn't you you weren't able to see this because it's off the screen but that's how I was able to find the, uh, you know through the path name where the scheduling log was at you just follow the path name uh, so this opens up the scheduling log now the scheduling log just goes through and you want to go through it and say okay uh, it, it goes through uh, all the information it says is scheduling scheduling yes is it done is it leveled well we don't have any resources in there so that doesn't apply um, do we ignore relationships to and from other projects we didn't have any is there any open ended activities that are critical it says yes so we need to look at that uh, make sure that all activities are not uh, that are have a successor or predecessor uh, do we have a expected finish date we do is it scheduled automatically yes it is uh, do we need to level the resources well we don't have resources in there uh, we don't need to do anything with cost retain logic is the logic we're going to use uh, our start to start lags for are from early start um, not late start so we're going to go through all these individual functions and we're going to make sure we're okay. Now, this is just kind of giving you a summary from here to here. It's just going to give you a summary. This is what you need to pay attention to, the errors, okay? When you go through the errors, it's going to say, okay, warning. This doesn't mean it's wrong. This means there are just some issues. An activity without a predecessor. Well, we have one. Notice to proceed. That's okay because that's the first activity. Uh, activities of that successors well this is not okay because you can see we have multiple different activities without successors the only we should only have one and that's uh, that one right there so these other three are missing successors so we need to go back in the software and fix that and put successors on these three activities add a sequence activity zero activities with the out with actual dates or baseline schedule we should have no actual dates whatsoever milestone activities uh, with invalid relationships, zero. Finished milestones. Uh, Predecessors have different calendars, zero. Um, Scheduling leveling. This has to do with uh, you know more resources. Um, it has a data date. This is information, pretty much. Exemptions. It talks. It tells you what the critical path is. What activities are on the critical path. So if someone asks you what the critical acti activities, you can simply just go in here, and you know, and sh and copy and paste it. Activities with unsatisfactory constraints, zero. Activities with unsatisfactory relationships, zero. And ex activities with external dates, zero. So it's always important to kind of review this because um, you want to make sure that these are not necessarily wrong. It's just warnings uh, for errors and stuff. So it's going to tell you any issues that you may have wrong within the, within the schedule. Okay. Uh, sometimes we need to run the schedule report and print it just to show that we've ran this report. So that covers uh, running the uh, scheduling report. So in summary, we've gone ahead and we've uh, reviewed the schedule log. We ensure the right, correct columns are, are shown. Uh, we understand that the end user doesn't have the software. We need to provide that information in a PDF format. Uh, we want to make sure the Gantt bars are, are, are uh, color coded correctly as I've shown you previously. Turn off the predecessor lines sort by the early start date and we want to make sure all summaries are open remember if we go ahead and we you know map this we can figure out where we're gonna where we're gonna go ahead and save it to um, and we can save it to any you know save it to a path name there and then once we run the scheduling report it'll hit it and here's another thing you can do too this is interesting you can also go view log you can automatically just view the log without saving it. That's probably easier to do. Um, so uh, a lot of good information in here. Um, a lot of information that I've previously shown you. It's important to go through it and uh, understand what it means. Uh, correct it through all the videos that we've gone to up until this point. You've had a chance to understand everything that's going to be on the on the log. Uh, so go through it, look at the issues that it, it's bringing to place. And remember, it talks about issues. These are not errors necessarily. They're just issues that we need to address and recognize. So remember, the software is only as smart as we are. So we need to make sure we understand what's going to be on this view log. So that covers step nine, number 19, uh, reviewing the log.